A 4 kilogram uniform beam is held in place by a cable and a support at the wall. Find the tension in the cable and the horizontal and vertical component of the force from the wall on the beam. This angle here is 53 degrees. The beam is staying at rest, so it satisfies the two conditions for equilibrium. The net torque has to be zero and the the net force has to be zero. Let's draw the force diagram. The 4 kilogram uniform beam has an mg 40 newtons acting at the center of mass right in the middle of the beam. The beam is touching the rope here so there is a tension. The beam is also touching this contact from the wall. This support provides a horizontal and vertical component of the force. So it's convenient for us to look at the horizontal component and the vertical component separately. If it is not obvious to you in which direction those components go, remember what we can do is we can pretend all the forces are acting on the beam except for one particular force we remove and then we can see what happens to the beam. Let's say if I remove, I mean if I keep the mg and the tension over there acting on the beam and then I remove this support, well this end of the beam go up or down after the support is removed. You can probably imagine this end of the beam will go down. That means the vertical component of the support force must go up. So let's say this is the force is a y component. And there's also a horizontal component. Do you think the horizontal component from the wall acting on the beam goes to the left or to the right? If we remove this support with the mg still there, tension still there, this end of the beam must have a tendency to poke into the wall. So the force from the wall in the horizontal direction must go to the right. Another way to tell this direction is uh, since tension has a component going to the left, this horizontal component must go to the right so these two they can cancel because our net force on the beam has to be zero. The beam is not touching anything else so we're done with the force diagram. The net force being zero means the clockwise torque has to equal to the counterclockwise torque. To write the torque equation we have to have a fulcrum. And in this case we have the most unknown force over here at the wall which means that this is probably the most convenient place for our pretend fulcrum. So if our fulcrum is over there, that means that the Fx and Fy will give us zero torque because we would have zero lever arm for Fx and a zero lever arm for Fy. The torque will only come from the tension and the mg. The clockwise torque will be produced by mg, which is 40 newtons, now what is the lever arm? The lever arm is the distance between this line of force and the axis. So it's the distance over here. Now the problem didn't give us anything about the length of the beam, which means the, the length of the beam probably does not matter. So we can just say, for example, the length of the beam is L and hopefully L will cancel. That means the the lever arm for the 40 newtons would be half L. And this should equal to the counterclockwise torque which is produced by the tension. It would be tension times the lever arm. Now the lever arm is the distance between the line of force and the axis. It's the perpendicular distance between this line and this dot. So I have to draw a perpendicular line over here. 
and this is my lever arm for the tension. This side is opposite to the 53 degree angle, which means it's the sine component. This is a right triangle. The hypotenuse is the length of the rod L. So the opposite side would be the hypotenuse L times sine 53 degrees. Of course, another way to find the torque produced by the tension is for us to find the tension's component going up that way, perpendicular to the beam, and then use the perpendicular component multiplied by the distance to find the torque, which will end up being the same because the perpendicular component will be T sine 53 degrees, and the distance will be L. So, of course, the torque will be the same. Anyway, the sine 53 degrees is 0.8, and uh, this L here does cancel, so our tension will end up being 25 newtons. Now we have to look at the net force is zero. Now it looks like this is just one equation, but it's actually two equations because uh, we have net force equals to zero for the x direction and the y direction. See, we have three unknowns to find t, the fx, and fy, so we do need three equations. The net torque equals to zero is one equation. The net force equals to zero is two equations because it's one for the x direction, one for the y direction. So three equations for our three unknowns. In the x direction, oh, before we can write those equations, we have to find the components for our slanted force. So I have to make a rectangle here, and this is the y component of the tension. This will be the x component of the tension. The x component is adjacent to the angle. So this x component is the cosine component. So this is a t, the cosine, 53 degrees. T is 25, so this is 25 times cosine 53 degrees. And uh, the vertical component has to be sine component. So it's 25 tw times sine 53 degrees. And this gives me 20, and this one is 15. In the x direction, there are only two forces. The 15 tensions component and fx. So those two, they must be equal. fx must equal to 15 newtons. And then in the y direction, the upward forces must equal to the downward force. So fy plus 20 must equal to the downward 40. fy plus 20 equals to 40. So the vertical component of the force from the wall must equal to 20 newtons. I don't know if you noticed this or not, but uh, in this case, see, if you look at the picture, it does not look symmetric left and right. But uh, it actually happens to be symmetric left and right in terms of forces, because uh, this beam has the weight mg right in the middle, at the center of the beam. So the two sides are actually be symmetric. See, the tension's upward component is 20. The force from the wall also has a vertical component 20. And then the horizontal component is 15, 15, which means uh, the total force from the cable is 25 going this way. The total force from the wall is also 25. Same angle, 53 degrees, 53 degrees over here. Now, that only happens because uh, this uh, beam is uniform and the mg happens to be right in the middle. Of course, if I change the problem so that there is a box sitting on the beam over here, then we break the symmetry, you will not have symmetric forces on the two sides because this is off-center. Another thing is, uh, even if the problem does not ask us to find the horizontal and vertical components of the force separately, it's still a good idea for us to separate the components 
because、uh, when we write the net force equals to zero, we still have to look at the two directions separately. That's why even though we have a stented tension over here, we still want the components over here. And the for the force on the walls, it may not be obvious、uh, which direction the total force is going to go. So it's easiest to just say it. Has two components, f x and f y, and then go from there.